everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Rebel Love Podcast. Today, my guest is Clarence Brown. Clarence is the owner and founder of Relationship Healing Coaching Services and the author of the best-selling book, Come and Talk to Me, The Women's Guide to Why Men Don't Communicate. Welcome, Clarence. Thanks so much for being here today. What's going on, Tally? How you doing? How you doing? Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. And before we get into any more questions, I just want to say the name of your book is awesome. Um, is there a bit of story about that or how did you, how did you come up with that? Well, um, like I said, there was a, a R&B group called uh, Jodeci back in the early 90s. They came uh, with a song called Come and Talk to Me. So they created the title uh, first. But I thought that that title related so much to uh, myself and, and other men that I've spoken to and our desires to feel like, you know, there there's some need to talk to us, that there is a, a, a warning and a, and a desire to talk to us as well. So I came up with a title because I thought it was intriguing to women to actually um, speak on behalf of men to say, hey, actually, we have some things that we want to say and talk about. You just got to come and talk to me. Yes. Yes. I, I feel like with a title like that, it would be flying off the shelves. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it did pretty well for itself. So I, I'm, I'm pretty excited and I'm, I'm grateful and humbled by all the people that kind of took to it and uh, gave it a shot because it was my first book. So, you know, it's my my first business baby, so to speak, you know, so I was just grateful that everybody kind of took a liking to it and I got some great reviews on it. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm humbled. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a it's a really really great topic, and I just want to give a um, a, a side note for our listeners that the purpose of today's podcast episode will mainly be referring to men and women in the context of heterosexual romantic relationships. So just keep this in mind when you're listening to this podcast. Now, I know in a previous discussion you spoke about mostly coaching women. Um, and, you know, hence the name, you know, the Women's Guide to Why Men Don't Communicate. So mm -hmm. how, how are you helping women, you know, really understand this? And are there no conversations that you're having with men about perhaps why they don't communicate? Well, I mean, here's the thing. When it comes to women, the, the battle most of the time is just getting them to understand that there are certain things that make a man feel less open or, or uh, willing to communicate about certain things. And so a lot of women say, hey, I know my man, I know certain things about him, but sometimes the, the uh, loss is in the fact that he knows her as well. And so over time, when you're dating somebody and you're getting to know somebody, it's certain things that happen along the way that kind of uh, are markers that, you know, a woman will say, oh, I got this response from this, or I got this response from that. And the same thing comes with a man where he's like, oh, okay, when I spoke about this issue, this is how she responded. Or when I said this thing, this is how she reacted. And all of a sudden, what women feel like, well, regardless of however, you know, he should feel, he should just be honest and upfront and da, da, da. And it's more just a need for her to want to know what he's thinking as opposed to care about what he's thinking. And so when it comes to certain topics that men bring up or certain things that he's talking about or, or refuses to talk about, should I say, women just get upset. And so it's, it's a battle for me to be able to break down what may be the reasons why he gets into that space. And so, you know, a lot of times women just overlook that part and just say, well, he should just be honest or he should just talk to me or he should just say what it is that he feels. And sometimes it's not going to be like that. It's not just going to be just because you feel like you want to hear what he has to say means that he's going to say what he has to say, knowing that it could be penalties that come behind it, or there could be, you know, it could be a, a argument that's a setup, or even, you know, the rest of the night may be ruined if he decides to talk about certain things. So, you know, when it comes to men, I, I speak to them to get the intel and get the insight on what it is that's making them refuse to communicate with a woman that they they love or that they have built a future with or built you know a foundation with and for the women it's trying to give them that insight and, and really break down the whys behind what what stopped the communication in their relationship so um that's that's just kind of how I, I communicate on both sides when it comes to trying to break down um the communication bridge and being that bridge uh between men and women when it comes to communication and understanding Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said something in there that was really interesting to me. You said um, 
a man says something and he waits to see how a woman responds. And then he said, um, then another one might be, I, I, when I do this, she reacts this certain way. So one right. of them is respond and one of them's react. And I thought that was really interesting mm-hmm. wording that you just kind of said there. And I, and I can certainly imagine that if somebody is, you know, saying something and then they get a certain reaction and it's, let's say it's a negative reaction or um, an extreme, more extreme reaction than you might expect, then obviously that's going to cause the person who who gave that uh, information to kind of shut down a little bit. And like you said, remember that. So yeah, absolutely. It's just like anything humans have from the dawn of time have adapted and adjusted to one another and to circumstances and the environment and the weather and, and, you know, resources and whatnot. So the same thing happens in human relations where we adjust and adapt to the person that we're around. You know, you, some people call it code switching, but it happens a lot even in a relationship where you start to, you know, code switch because you're starting to recognize who you're around and what you can talk about, what things that you can bring up, what things you may be able to get away with saying, you name it. So, I mean, it's, it's you document and you adapt. So just like how, you know, if the first time we made fire, who, who man knew it was hot because he burned his hands or his feet. And then all of a sudden you say, Ooh, this, this, you know, and you adjust to that. And, and as you learn more about a person, you adjust to that person as well. So now finding out where those moments were, where the, the communication was consistent and became no longer consistent is that's, that's really where we're trying to, you know, really dive into it and figure that out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So what if you, I mean, I guess this is really helpful. Like you said, you coach women. So you're, I, um, and let me correct me if I'm wrong. You're coaching women to go, okay, so this is the pattern. This is what keeps happening. So how can we take responsibility for our part in that and go, okay, how can we meet our objective, which is to get our partner to open up um, in a way that's actually going to be, you know, going to work for one and going to be in a really respectful and productive way. Is that, is that kind of what you're working towards? Absolutely. absolutely. And just to piggyback on that, the, the, The good news for somebody and the bad news for other people is that that is the work that it takes to make a relationship um, last. And so a lot of times when things are mentioned, when it comes to servicing the person that you're with, that servicing your partner, I I hear this statement (laughs) probably 90% of the time, which is, why do I have to do that? I shouldn't have to do that. Right. Right. You hear from men and you hear from women. Well, why do I have I shouldn't have to do that. He should just know or she should just do it. You know, he's old enough to know or she's she should be old enough to figure these things. And it's like, listen, you while being the same gender wise as another woman or me being a man, being the same gender wise as a lot of men, there's very many differences that make me my own individual self. And the same can be said about you and anybody else. So the problem is, is that a lot of the times we group people in in labels and then we feel like we shouldn't have to do but so much to get back a lot, you know, in return and get that return on investment. But that's why I hear the statement all the time is I shouldn't have to do that is because what I'm speaking to are the things that make a relationship last that are the work that are the difference between single folks and folks that are in relationships and, and long lasting marriages and such. So, um, you know, definitely it, it takes a lot, but trying to really dive into the whys and the, the wins and, and what actually happened and kind of peeling back layers is, you know, what's needed to be able to kind of really say, okay, let's recover what we, we lost and move forward. Mm-hmm. What if you're, um, you're a couple who finds yourself in this situation, like you said, I keep getting this reaction and perhaps this has been going on for years. Um, you know, we, we all know that like habits that are kind of ingrained are a lot harder to change. Is it possible? Let's say, let's say somebody finds themselves listening to this podcast and they're like, oh my gosh, this sounds like my life. It's been going on for like five years, like the same thing, like smashing your head against that brick wall for five years. Right. Um, but I want to change. I want to change. They've got that first step. Where do I start? Well, you got to recognize the patterns first. You know, people don't have uh, habits. They actually have patterns. Okay. Learn this from a a great 
uh, uh, my, my pastor, who's also my co-host on my podcast, is that people don't have habits, they have patterns. So what happens is just like, you know, me, for some reason, I always take the, the same way home. I, you know, my wife, you know, she she knows my telltale signs of, you know, when I dislike something like, you know, she'll ask me a certain question. And, and then when I do this, when I scratch my head, like she always knows like, oh, you don't like it. Dude. I'm like, no, nah, it's, it's good. Like, nah, you <laughs> She Stop. can hear it in your voice too. <laughs> right, but she knows whenever she asks me something for some reason, my neck just starts to itch, and I just, you know. And so, you have patterns, and so um, what you have to do is identify what those patterns are and believe them, because people will tell you whatever they want. People will tell you whatever uh, they can to excuse what behavior they they consistently give you what reactions or responses they consistently give you so you have to recognize those identifiers and believe them right and so that when they go to say it's this way you can say oh well you know well that's what you say but apparently this is the same reaction i get for said issue and so when you actually see that this is the pattern then you can tell them hey well i'm unfortunately continuing to get in this same reaction while st- still being required to give more in the communication department. And it's hard for me to do that, knowing that I'm walking into a bear trap, knowing that it's a minefield that you lead me into. And some of the times, the things that we say are the difference in how we need to be spoken to actually are misleading. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you'll say, well, if you did it like this, or if you'd have said something like this, or why didn't you speak up then and there? And it's like, well, you, you, you misleading because had I said this or had I spoken up, had I really voiced my opinion at the moment that you wanted me to, a lot of the times it might not have ended well for myself or between the two of us now, all of a sudden the whole night is ruined and the chemistry of the night is ruined. And so you have to really kind of dig into those things and really talk about, you know, what are your, what are your uh, patterns? So if a man says, hey, you want me to talk about this and talk about that, bring up these, you know, deep topics or really go into my past, to, you know, unveil things about who I really am and, my, you know, what I desire and all that. And it's like, but when I talk about certain things, you get in your feelings or you act like, you know, if I don't say it in a certain context, in a certain way, it's so many factors to that, to where a person feels like, OK, wait a minute, what you well, Oh, OK. And then misinterpret your message. So. These are all parts of it. These are all parts of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And let's go back to something you said before. You talked about, um, you said before, what, why do I have to do this? You know, why do mm-hmm. I have to, why do I have to do this? She should know, he should know. Um, I guess my question is, or uh, my observation is in order to go to say, okay, perhaps he or, or she should know this, but they don't. The reality is that they don't. So um, I need to kind of put my big person pants on <laughs> and right. do and do that. And you know, and sometimes it's like this pride thing or this um, stubbornness of like, well, I don't want to do it. And it's like I don't know when you when you when you step up. I feel like it kind of like what is it? Rising tides lifts all ships or boats it's like you know when you're when you're because you're half of that relationship right and maybe you you don't want to but when you do it's kind of like see what happens you think that's part of it that pride thing letting go of um the stubbornness maybe i'm not sure if that's the right word yeah and yeah that is is stubborn and the mindset of everything has to be an even exchange you know we all consumers so when it comes to relationships, it's almost like, hey, well, I'm only doing this as long as I'm getting this back in return. Right. Or why should I do this if you're not doing that? Or I'm not going to go above and beyond if I'm only going to get so much back, right? And it's always is is weighing the equivalence, is weighing the values of of what you give versus what you're getting back, right? Mm-hmm. But yet being that that to me, if it doesn't, I don't know about you, but that to me sounds like a selfish mindset that sounds like well i'm only gonna give you so much unless you're giving me x amount if you don't do this then don't don't expect me to do and it's like you living based off this exchange system that that isn't real love that isn't real love to say hey listen well you know i want somebody because again what we oftentimes want we 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 mirror and that sometimes is the problem it's good news for somebody it's bad news for somebody else 
because some of the things that we we are we we tend to think that it's not a problem until we see a mirror of that reflection in someone else that then is like well you know they they care just as little as i do to really make me happy they actually have just as much fear as i do in relationships and being committed to somebody that i don't know is really going to last right this person seems to be just as unwilling to really open up and be vulnerable as i am because i've been hurt i've been this i've been going through that and you don't know who i am you don't know why i'm who i am. and you see what i'm saying and all of these things right are the are the the cons to the pros that we all think we have and then when we start to see that person show the cons that we we you know that we also have then it's almost like wait a minute you can't do that that's unfair and that's where it comes in that we like well you have to change your mindset and really have to uh you know respect that that person has a, a view of you of their own does that make sense mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to respect sometimes what a person sees in you and not always hold it against them because you have a, a vision or an image of yourself in your mind and that person doesn't seem to really recognize that the same way you do. Mm, it sounds like this kind of level of defensiveness almost like, you know, whereas like you, you said in, the, in there that word vulnerability. And I think that like, you know, taking a breath and going, hang on, what is the truth of this situation? I don't know about you, but when someone says something to me that um, kind of stings a little bit, I always kind of go, okay, that's something I need to examine. Like, why did that sting a little bit? And, I, and I, often, for my, I can only speak for myself, often it's because there's some truth to what they said and I don't really want to hear it. <laughs> and so then I go, oh, you know, that hurt. And then I'm like, okay, what first of all who's delivering this message to me do I love them how is it being said and like you said before am I making it like am I being too picky and making it something bigger than it should be because of how it said like was it said in a mean way to hurt me or was it said as genuine feedback um and yeah is it true those are the kind of questions that I ask myself. And I find that, you know, when you're examining things like this, first of all, I'm taking responsibility for my response and um and it's definitely not always comfortable, but what's interesting is that I find, and, and like, let me know what your experience has been with yourself and with your clients is um, what I feel like growth is in those uncomfortable moments. What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why a lot of relationships don't grow. That's why you don't see a lot of relationships move in a faster pace because a lot of people aren't willing to really show their true selves and they are very defensive behind some of the, the criticisms that they need to hear in order to grow themselves so that the relationship can continue to grow. And so, you know, you said something earlier that I, I hear a lot from ladies and it's this, well, it depends on who's telling me this, <clears throat> right? That thing, that and I, it's not to pick on you, but it's only to say that this is something that a lot of people, both men and women, allow to, to hinder their progression and their growth. And so think about it, right? You know, you heard the statement that you always are going to get the truth from uh, drunk, drunk people and children, right? Children, you know, got a way of telling the saying the darnest things because they have no filter. If you stink, they're going to tell you stink. If your breath stinks, they're going to say, hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Clarence, your breath stinks. You know, if you if you walk a, walk a funny, you know, funny type of way, they're going to talk about you, right? And drunk people yeah. going to tell the truth as well. But mm -hmm. oftentimes what, what gets lost is that we always look at the source, you know, instead of the message. And so when somebody is telling me a message that even if it's something that is a criticism or something that they feel like is a suggestion for me to do, and there's something that I feel like, man, I don't really know if I should be doing this or considering what you have to say, I, I take it at face value and remove the messenger and consider the message more. And so mm -hmm. you have a lot of men, you have a lot of women that will say, well, based upon who is telling me this, that'll determine how I receive this. And mm -hmm. it's been plenty of things that I have been told that have been awesome advice from people that are homeless, people that, you know, are our children as well. You know, mm -hmm. people that are, you know, some that may have seemed to be an enemy of mine at one point in time, right? Mm -hmm. And I give you a per, and, and this is this is something that gets in the way a lot of, of, of a lot of people's progression, as I said. And my own personal testimony is that when I met my wife, when the time we were dating, right, 
I had a, a a good friend of mine that I was roommates with. He was like my closest road dog, my one of my best friends, right? And a week prior to my wife telling me this message, he told me this. He said, Clarence, you selfish, bro. And so I was like, you know, I'm like, no, I'm not. He's like, nah, bro, you are, you are, right? And so knowing that I had so much respect for him and he was a close friend of mine, I didn't take offense to it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, a week after that, <clears throat> When remember I was dating now and I, I, I wasn't aware of certain things. So I go out to eat. I oh, not go out to eat, but I, I stop off on the way home and get some get me something to eat. My wife or my girlfriend at the time was there. And uh, when I get home, I'm getting into this food and she's like, well, why didn't you get me anything? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? I didn't know I had to get you anything. And she was like, don't like you. You couldn't even just call me, whatever. So the pop, the point was she called me selfish. And I, I was defensive. I was like, hold up, how am I, you know? And I'm like, just because of this, I'm all of that. But I had to think to myself that my buddy had just told me this a week prior. He was like, bro, I love you, but you selfish. And I, I, I said to myself, well, she can't be too far off if I just heard it from somebody who's known me all his life and we're like this as, but as bros, right? Mm -hmm. So when I first got defensive, and then realized that my, my buddy had just told me this and I, I had to take a step back like, man, you know what? I'm gonna take this a little bit more seriously because I know that what she's saying is not just to put me down, but it's just something she genuinely sees. Mm -hmm. But it was up to me to receive her message of being selfish and then having you know, tr the opportunity to change that. But um, a lot of people just don't, they just find themselves until they're ready to listen, they don't wanna hear it. Whatever you're saying is not, is mm -hmm. not the gospel until they're ready to receive it as opposed to saying, okay, well, I can take a message from anybody and not consider the messenger as much as the message. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad you brought that up actually, because it's interesting that you say that the example that I was thinking about when I said that was I was thinking of my best friend because my best friend has said things to me that seriously, if anybody else said them, <laughs> I'd probably get really defensive. But because I know she loves me, like she's, yeah, my closest girlfriend, she know has known me for 20 years. You know, mm -hmm. she can literally be really brutally honest with me. And like I said, like sometimes it still sings and actually it hasn't happened for quite a few years now, which is kind of nice, <laughs> but um, you know, when it did, was happening, you know, I'd be like, Ooh, and it, that was from her, but I agree with what you're saying. Like when you have a partner, I think that once, you know, romance and, you know, sex, sex starts to be involved and people get kind of a little bit more like, Oh my God, like hyper aware and like hyper defensive. If someone says something that, you know, can sting a little bit. And I think that is such a great example that you just brought up the same message from two different people. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Wow. Um, and okay. Can I ask in that particular instance then? So when, when you had that instance with your then um, girlfriend, now wife, how did you, what did you say to her after that? Like after I you realized, cause you said you, you know, you had to look in a little bit. No, I told her that she was crazy. I told her that she was crazy that she was uh, too high-minded, that how could she really like think I'm selfish just off of something like this? Like it was just a simple thing where I was hung. But at the I, again, I, and you gotta think, you know, when I was brought up, I was brought up with my mom, single parent household. I lived with my dad um, from the time I was 12 to like, I don't know, 19 or, or 20 or something like that. And I think it was 19, but both times it was without uh, uh, two parents in the household. So when I was living with my mom, it was without a dad. When I was with my dad, it was without my mom. You know, he had a girlfriend here or there, but I never really seen him interact in a real relationship. It was kind of like he had some, you know, some little flings on the side or whatever, you know, some chicks that he kind of kicked it with or whatever. But so now as a man, I'm just thinking, hey, I'm hungry. I go get something to eat, regardless of I have a lady with me that I should be considering if she needs something. That was something I had to learn. But when she told me that I was selfish, I was defensive because I'm like, like, for what? Why are you why are you labeling me as something that I felt like was demeaning my character? Mm -hmm. And so regardless of it being actually true at the time, I didn't want to receive it. I didn't want to accept it until I looked at it like, a day or two later, I'm like, man, you know what? I really, I can be selfish in some ways, right? I do think about myself more and, and I, I really didn't have any reason to think about anybody else until then. And then that's what also allowed me to start making adjustments to include somebody else in my life. Mm -hmm. But 
at the time, I just, I, you know, I, I kind of blew her off like, man, you know, whatever, man. Like, you know, and so really I saw that that, that was a turn off for her and I really liked her. You know, this is another thing, another difference where you have, especially women, a women will be able to take a certain criticism for somebody that they really, really are into. So if a guy's like, you know, really attractive or he's got his his shit together and he's really doing his thing. Right. You you'll be more willing to say, OK, well, hold on. You know, maybe let me kind of assess what's going on. Like maybe, you know. Maybe I do kind of got attitude sometime. I do need to tone that back. You know, I've heard that before. But if this guy isn't <clears throat> on that level or you don't see or value him in that way, you're going to be like, man, please. I don't like from you, like of all people, you know, and even right. if the message is true, you're going to be more rejective, you know, rejecting to that message because of the messenger, which is why I say you can't be so much attached to the messenger more than the message because like I said, even if a person is, you know, in a different situation than you doesn't mean that they don't have knowledge like you or more knowledge than you. There's plenty of people that have made stumbles and falls in their life, but still have a wealth of knowledge. They're just in the right, not in, a, in the same situation of, of uh, uh, what I want to say of uh, prosperity as right. you would like them to do when they give you that message. So that's all I'm saying is that, you know, you can't, attach that to the messenger you got to be willing to listen you got to be willing to listen and, and uh mm. receive a message even if it may be something that you didn't know or didn't want to hear about yourself at the time yeah and i think that 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 you just mentioned that piece of you going back in that next two days and really examining and going oh hang on maybe this is a lesson i need to learn and i love mm. that you said i really liked her she, she wasn't really into that and i really liked her so I, you know, and I realized, okay, maybe this is something I can work on. Now I'm going to adjust my behavior because I want to, I want to keep it around, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Where awesome. You want a man to really like you. You want a man to make those adjustments. You know, the statement that gets thrown out, thrown out a lot is that, Hey, if a man really wants you, he'll do whatever it takes to be with you. Right. But a lot of times that a, the, a woman, or in some cases, men as well, don't do the things to continue being liked by the other party until love is starting to, to emanate from your situation. Like you can't just say, well, I'm going to sit here and, and do nothing, cross my fingers and, and really kind of have a, a, a really bad attitude and expect them to just see who I am, know what I'm worth and, and all of that. And then if they don't, then it's their loss. It's like, well, I, I never really got a chance to see who you really were. I never got a chance to, to experience your true self. And then when I step away, it's because I don't really see what's there. Now, it is not because my eyes don't work because you didn't actually, you know, have the care of, for me to show who you truly were so that I can really see the, the full value of what you had to provide and, and how you could have maybe enhanced my life. So, you know, that, that's just one of the things I just wanted to say and speak about that because I think a lot of the times when it comes to what you're willing to receive is based upon how that person looks, what status they are, how you feel about them as far as chemistry wise. And sometimes, you know, some of the best messages come from people that you may not feel like are on that level. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you really touched on a really important thing of like that space of being vulnerable and that's exactly what it is, right? Being vulnerable. And it's scary. Like it is scary because, you know, they could not like you as well. They could actually get to know you and be like, oh, actually, you know, I'm not into you. Cause it, it's so true, right? We're attracted, especially in today's dating with like Tinder and all of these apps that we're using, you know, a lot of it is based on looks first. And, you know, I, I was actually went out on a date with a guy and he, he said to me, which is really interesting. He said, oh, so what attracted you to me? And I was like, huh. And I told him what the reason was. And then he said, I said, what attracted you to me? And he said, oh, the way you look. <laughs> and I was like, I love that you were so just blunt about it. Cause I, I was like, okay, fair enough. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, that's true. That's the first step. And then he was like, and then I got, we got talking and I, I liked what I was hearing. And there was like this progression, right? This hierarchy. And so, um, Anyway, so I, I just love that. I think that you're, you're so right in that dating period. You know, there's these certain kind of things that we cling to first looks, you know, I guess for me, it's kind of like ambition and um, drive, you know, those kinds of things. Like I don't, you know, I know that a lot of it is important for a lot of um, people in relationships that their partner have a certain status. Um, but for me, it's more about drive and like um, 
willingness to just get what you want, even if it's not, doesn't bring monetary gain necessarily for me, that's for me anyway. But um, yeah, but I think that a lot of women, they, they um, sometimes overlook the fact that like what you said, the guy said the first thing that attracted him to you was the way that you look. That is a real big thing when it comes to relationships that sometimes women hold against men. So it's almost like, well, why, you know, accept me as I am. And it's like, well, if that's not my preference, am I wrong? Because you you don't fit my preference. No different than a, a woman saying, hey, I want a, a man to be clean cut. I want him to have a nice, you know, jawline. I want him to be able to, to fit into a suit well. I want him to be able to smell nice. I, you see what I'm saying? So if a, a woman can say, hey, she's not wrong for those things and don't look at a man wrong because you may not fit his preference. And that's not to say that you still don't have a heart of gold because you may have that. But yet even the man that that uh, will someday marry you, he's at first going to have to be physically attracted to you. And that's something that, you know, it is more important and higher on a man's list than maybe a woman's yeah well i think it's also interesting to note that like um i think that that's the kind of world we're living in with tinder is that we don't get the opportunity to to get people's vibes and i can definitely say that when you know in the days which i can't even remember now because it was so long ago <laughs> of picking people up in bars it was really nice like i did get to talk to guy to men who like if i saw their picture probably wouldn't have swiped right on but had such beautiful energy and i had a great conversation and instantly that attraction was there and i may not have had that opportunity just from images so there's a lot you know i think there's a lot to unpack there but i don't want to get too far off our <laughs> off our course here i actually want to ask you um Going back to your book, um, you know, The Women's Guide to Why Men Don't Communicate, in your experience, what are some of the common reasons that men don't communicate? Let's get into this. This is exciting. So uh, common reasons that men don't communicate is labeling. Labeling and um, what was I saying earlier, the, the misleading arguments that a woman will try to tell a man, a man that, hey, you you avoid this if you just approach me this way or if you say things this way or that way. And like I said before, as as even, you know, we're, we're still mammals, we're animals, we adapt, we document and we adapt. So just like a woman is documenting a man's actions, a, a man is documenting a woman's actions. And so regardless of what she may say, He's, he can go back to his mental Rolodex and say, nah, that, that's not what happened last time. <laughs> right. That's not, you know, that's not what happened when I did do exactly what you said for me to do. Right. And, and the other thing, as I said earlier, was labeling. So where you, you, you're so easy to be labeled, you know, this cancer culture that we live in today. If you say one wrong thing or misplaced words or a phrase that was out of out of pocket at, at, a, at any moment, now the message get gets sliced and parsed into individual messages. And it's almost like as you're trying to make a point, everything that you say is being broken down to a bolus, to, to baby food. And it's, and, it's, and it's very, very frustrating for a man to have to deal with the fact that if he's trying to make a point, and he may not be as articulate to be able to express it through the first sentence that now everything that he, every word that he, it's just like the police, everything he says can and will be used against him. Right. Okay. So just like the Miranda rights, it's almost like, you know, and they tell you when they, when they arrest you, they say, Hey, whatever, anything that you say can and will. So it's almost like they shouldn't even say can, they should just say anything you say will be used against you. And so you'll have men that, that carry that same mindset within relationships where they may love the lady that they have and love their wives, love their girlfriends. But at the same time, it's like, you can, you can bait me all you want, but I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to go into this area of conversation with you because I know how you're going to react and respond. And I know that, you know, for me, I'm going to be labeled as something that I'm going to have an uphill battle trying to clear my name from. And certain, certain times I just don't, I'd rather not deal with it. I just rather mm -hmm. not do that. And so this is one of the reasons where you have communication that seems, uh, tends to actually, uh, you know, uh, lower and decrease in, in, in its volume within a relationship because these are the things that are inside a man's mind. 
So that's why I started a Facebook group inside a man's mind as well. You want to check that out. It's on Facebook. Oh, cool. That's a, that's a great name too, man. You're killing it with the names. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they okay. The headlines, they don't read the fine print. Yeah, it's very, very true. Very true. So, okay. So in that scenario, when you're saying, you know, like everything you can and will be used against you, uh, I like exactly what we were talking about before. I guess that there's like that pattern, right? Of the guy going, oh, this keeps happening. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop talking because I don't want to deal with this anymore. So, so if we're in a situation um, and we're as a woman and we're like, okay, I want to get him to open up. Um, it's going to take a while, right? It's going to take a while of us changing our behavior and not reacting in those ways so that he eventually on his own comes to the realization, oh, she's chilled out a little bit. She stepped back a little bit. She's not, right. I don't feel as much kind of defense. See, because here's the thing. A lot of women that become, or a lot of women don't recognize where you have side chicks that will be able to creep in a man's life and creep into a woman's relationship or her marriage, right? A lot of the blame goes on to men, but yet that still is one half of the problem because where a person may look outside a relationship, in many cases, just because you weren't the person to, to make that fault doesn't mean that you don't have fault in the situation, right? And so where a lot of women that will um, you know, creep into relationships as side events, side chicks and whatnot, the way they, they get their place is because they make the man feel like they understand him. See, so where you have women that in the relationship in the beginning, they make it seem like there's just this great vibe and energy between the two of y'all. What's going on in the man's mind is he's believing that, man, this this chick, she really understands me. Like, wow, I just feel like, you know, on these different topics, the conversations we have, like she just she just seems to understand me so well. And that 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 just keeps me coming back. I mean, yes, yeah, she's attractive. That's number one. But number two is like this, this connection we have makes me as a man truly believe that she understands me. And so when that starts to drop off, that's when the door is cracked for other women. Because now here's the thing. A woman can talk to a man all day and have no attraction to him because women are communicators. But when a man is talking to a woman, then you have a huge problem or, or a woman outside a relationship. Because what happens is, with a man, his words mean something because a lot of men don't don't communicate that <laughs> that well to where it's almost like um, I can just talk to a woman and it doesn't mean anything. When a man is talking to a woman, there's always some intention. Now, it doesn't mean that his intention to have sex, but there's always some intention. So that's why I said when when a woman or when a man feels like a woman understands him, like that's where she's making her bones. That's when she's creating her place within his life. And that is, is something that I think a lot of women overlook because within the relationship, we're always trying to get it to work out best for us and get what works best for us instead of trying to understand how it can work between the two of us instead of it always being about me and whatever I'm getting and how much you're, you're not giving me what I'm supposed to get and all of that and above. Okay, so how do we then... How can we get into a space where we're helping our partner open up? What specific things can we do? Glad you asked. So it's all it's, it's detailed in my book as well. Mm -hmm. Come and talk to me, the women's guide to why men don't communicate. Shameless plug. <laughs> judge do me it. not. Judge me not. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> but so in there, there's a, there's a few phrases that um, I heard women use that are very effective. So when a woman says, "Hey, listen." you know what, I deal with a lot myself. When a woman says, hey, we all go through issues, we all are struggling to, to uh, deal with certain things about ourselves. Hey, nobody is perfect. That's another, that was the third one, right? So these statements give a man a sense of comfort when it comes to the things that he may be dealing with that he wants to reveal or just maybe hasn't yet felt comfortable enough to open up about, right? And so when a woman, and also too, another thing is to speak about some of the things that are your wounds, your hidden scars, the things that you've gone through and, and not in a way to say, okay, this is never going to happen to me again. And if, you know, if I ever come across a person that treats me like this, 
like that, that's going to be like, oh, snap, you know, oh, wait, you know. But if you speak about those things as just to say, hey, listen, so moving forward, you know, I wish to have something that's more solid in this area or, you know, some of my own uh, bad decisions kind of were some things that, you know, put me uh, in a disfavorable position. So, you know, I'm just kind of revealing some of the things that show that I'm not perfect as well. Those are the things that make a man feel comfortable about himself and, and comfortable about opening up to you. And so a lot of the things like that are just very commonplace and can be just key trigger statements that make a man feel like, you know what, okay, so this is what happened. Where with some, you know, with a certain woman, it could be you, he might decide to, nah, really, I don't want to talk about it. You know, and so you get two different reactions, and that's based upon his belief and his trust in who you say you are. So when certain women try to act like, hey, listen, you know what? I'm not really going to talk about those things. Well, don't ask him to talk about those things. If you right. don't want him to dig into certain areas about your life and your past, then don't ask him or require him to do that. But right. if you do do that, then now it's almost like you can hold him accountable to open up to you because you're like, well, I haven't told you so much about myself. It's like anytime I try to speak or try to get you to open up about yourself, you keep holding back. Like, is it something about me or is it something about, you know, what, what you have or what you've dealt with? Like, you know, I just want to know more about you. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be in a space where we're spending all of this time and I feel like I don't really know who you are. Um, so I, I just want for you to be, you know, honest with me about some of the things that you've dealt with as well. And so things like that, when women go uh, through that approach and take that approach are uh, more useful and effective when it comes to getting a man to open up, because it's not always just this, this, this uh, overhang of trust and belief in one another that when you, you just met this person. So you need to know and, and feel like that person is giving you the space to do that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. And, and what if we're, what if we're doing all of those things and it's been going on for quite like, I'm talking about someone who's kind of an established couple now, perhaps even married. Um, how can we lovingly encourage like counseling with our partners um, without pressuring or ultimatums? And yeah, what does that kind of conversation look like? And is that something that uh, could be useful? Oh, absolutely is useful. But I think um, when a person is going to counseling on their own, that that prompts that other person to, to keep have their wheels turning already, right? A lot of the times if a woman is taking counseling without her man, when she comes home, her man wants to know, well, what, what did y'all talk about? Were y'all talking about me? Was it something that I did? Or, you know, what, what was the topic of conversation, right? And even if he at first is feeling like, oh, well, I don't really want to go there. I don't really want to talk to no therapist. I don't need it. I don't need it. He still has a level of intrigue to figure out what's going on in those sessions that he's not present in. So what ends up happening is that a person taking time to invest in their self and their self-development, it sometimes is a, a trigger for that other person to say, okay, well, maybe this, you know, I'm starting to see you develop. I'm starting to see you mature in a lot of different ways. Maybe this isn't such a bad thing. I can, you know, let me slide in there one time or two, you know, and just see kind of what's going on. Maybe I can ask him or her some questions of my own. But most of the times a person feels like if I'm going to go, I want you to come with me or, or I don't go. And that mm -hmm. is not the way to handle it because, you know, I read this book, The Millionaire Mindset. And, and the principle of that book is if you want to change the fruit, you have to change the root, right? So, uh that it, it all starts from within. So anytime that you starting to feel like, hey, I'm putting in so much effort and I'm, I've am i done this, I've done that. What's the next step, Clarence? Because I, I'm trying to get them to open up or I'm trying to get this person to open up and I'm doing my due diligence, but it right. seems like nothing's happening. Well, you know, counseling on yourself, therapy on yourself can be a, a influence on your partner. And also too, I'm, I'm a big proponent of, hey, listen, when it comes to double standards, you know, it's hard to hold somebody accountable when there's a double standard. One of the things that helps a person to, you know, come around with some, some of the things that are, are in the relationship as problems is you, you doing your due diligence to do the right thing and say, hey, I'm, I'm trying to, to get out of you conversation. I'm trying to, to pull out of you some of the things that, that may 
help me understand who you are so I can be a better service as a girlfriend or a wife or, you know, in this, in, in even a case with men, you know, as a husband or a boyfriend. So um, those things that I feel like I'm doing, it seems not, not to be successful. And I'm trying to figure out what is it that makes it so unsuccessful? Is it something that I'm doing? Am I nagging you? Are you ever going to open up a certain, about certain things? I'm just trying to figure out where we are with that. And, and without, um, hearing from you, I'm going to move forward and continue progressing, maturing and, and changing my life. And hopefully you'll join me with that. Mm, yeah, I love that. That's really great um, way, like ammunition for how we can, what, what language we can use. So thank you for that. So uh, this has been awesome, by the way. So um, before we wrap up, I have one more question for you. Um, when is enough enough? If a woman, let's talk from the woman's perspective now. Um, as we have been, uh, if a woman's like, you've been doing all of the things said that the, you know, the script basically that you just gave us, which was really helpful. Um, and the partner's just not coming to the table when, at what point do we decide that it's time to exit rather than keep going when somebody's not opening up and is there a compassionate way to do this? Yeah. So to me, I'm, I'm not a real big proponent of, you know, ending relationships unless it's something serious because what what you'll see and what you, you know a lot of single folks will, will attest to this is that there's not much more quality than you may already have out in the single market and so a lot of times people feel like that well if I'm not getting this part then screw it all and I think that what a lot of people have yet to to you know, really take the time and look at it is what was really the value of you being single. If in a relationship you got, let's say eight or nine out of 10 things on your list knocked off. And so I understand communication is very key and valuable, but at the same time, to what end? Is it to where, hey, well, that person is really communicating with you, but yet there's other areas that are dropping off or other things that also are a problem and, you know, Communication is just one of those things. You have to look at how how the the balance of your relationship is. But if you've done all you can do, I'm not saying that you you just stick it out regardless. Because if you're not happy, you're not happy. So I always say, hey, do what you feel like you need to do. Do what's necessary on your end to be able to say, hey, well, at the very least, I did my part. And so, what is when is enough? 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 Enough is when you you know, when you try to talk to that person, when you mention the things that were on your mind and try to hear their response and gave them an opportunity, gave them a platform to express themselves and they didn't do it or gave them a chance to really clarify what was wrong or, or what were the inconsistencies in your thoughts or your mind behind the situation, but yet they never did that. So it's hard for, for you to have, uh, you know, room to give them compassion when they're not giving you much to work with. And so that's where you can hold them accountable to say, hey, listen, you can't be no more mad at me than I am of you of not opening up or giving me any clarification on these things that I'm, I'm having issues with, right? And so as I've tried to, to bring these forth in a, in a respectful, polite way, you just seem to dismiss those or disregard it. And so for that reason, I feel like I can't continue to move on like this. And either we come to some middle ground, either we communicate, or just it's just not going to last. I don't see myself being able to be in a relationship with a person who doesn't communicate with me. That's just the bottom line. And so you you know if it's a certain type of way that I'm approaching you, then we need to talk about that so we can we can we can even that out. We can we can clean that up and make sure that we now move forward with a, a better and a deeper level of understanding. But if you're not giving me anything to work with, how can we even get to that point? Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I say that's, you know, that is where enough is enough, because, you know, the question I get is, hey, well, if the things that you recommend I'm doing. First of all, I want to make sure they're doing it right. But if you're if you're doing it properly and you're still not getting anything, well, then, hey, <laughs> you know what? You have to find your own happiness somewhere. Right. And if that's not with that person, you don't have to have a. a, a you know, a beef with them. You don't have to have any dispute with them. You just say, hey, listen, this is what I'm trying to get. This is what I want. This is what I'm giving. And this is what I'm not receiving back. Right. So at this point, I've done what I'm doing. 
to try to show that I'm invested, but yet I can't continue to invest and give, give, give and not get anything back. So that's, mm -hmm. that's my solution. Clarence, thank you so much for everything today. I feel like this has just been super valuable um, to get into inside the minds of uh, men, if we are not men. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for being here today. If people want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Uh, you can go to my website, which is relationshiphealing.co. That's not.com. You want to chop that M off. It's relationshiphealing.co. And for everybody out there, especially the ladies, I'm working on a course right now. I'm almost right. I'm almost done. I'm probably about a week away from um, launching my next online course. It's called Attract a Quality Man in 30 Days. Um, I did the research. I spoke to over 200 men and interviewed them on what it is that they find desirable in the women that they choose to date and ultimately marry. So, you know, just, you know, men from, from attorneys to accountants to um, uh, uh, financial advisors, you name it. Um, so just trying to really get that insight for women, because one of the questions I get a lot is where are all the quality men um, you know, what do I say um, once I get in a room with him? What things turn men on? So I, I break down all of that within an online course to give women the tools and equip them with the knowledge of what men are looking for so that they can already be on point and ready um, in the settings of quality men to be able to attract that man they deserve and desire. So um, all you need to do is go to my website, relationshiphealing.co. You can um, buy my book, Come and Talk to Me, The Women's Guide to Why Men Don't Communicate. Um, sign up for a coaching um, a session if you'd like, or uh, sign up for my online training as well when it comes out in about a week. So thank you, Tally. I appreciate, for the, appreciate you for the uh, time and allowing me to share your platform. Thank you so much for being here. It's been really fun. Uh, and for everyone listening, you can find all the links mentioned in this episode at rebellove.com forward slash EP27. Thanks again, Clarence. Thanks for listening to the Rebel Love Podcast, the podcast about love, sex, relationships, and money. If you like this episode, please support us by subscribing and leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform and find all the details of this episode and more at rebellove.com forward slash podcast.